Hello once again, I'm Grant Abbott, you're watching Gabbett Media, and we're going through Sculpt January, and we're on number 24, which was fat. And you can see the results just here. Fairly pleased with this, this took um, an hour and 20 minutes, uh, recording time that is. Uh, so a quick one today, um, but it turned out okay. Uh, I started off with uh, Metaballs, and uh, I haven't used Metaballs for a little while. I usually use the skin modifier these days. I find it's better for slightly more complex shapes in terms of the bulk of the body, so characters, that sort of thing. I've done, and I've done a lot of characters uh, this time around. Uh, but Metaballs work for sort of blobby type things. Um, I tend to use that word a lot, don't I? Blob. Uh, but uh, so I got my Metaball blob out this time and started doing the shape because I wanted that sort of round feel. I did the same for the Bulldog sculpt, which I think turned out a bit better, really. Um, it seemed to have more character. And I found that really tough, getting the character right on this one. Uh, uh, that's where I'm lacking as an artist, definitely. Uh, so once you've got your metables uh, set, you can convert them to the mesh and then just put them into, um, what do you call it, uh, sculpt mode. Uh, then die and topo on and away you go. Uh, and it's just uh, pulling around the shape, getting that outline. Uh, so I always go for the grab brush first. I saw a very good tutorial by, well it wasn't a tutorial as much, it was just a sort of sculpting session with Master Zeon, he calls himself, uh, and he does a lot of hard surface modeling, and you probably know him for his box cutter add-on. Uh, but that was really informative, and I'll be using some of that in my sculpts in the future. And I might be doing my own tutorials on aspects of that combined with my own techniques. Uh, so watch out for that in the in the future, <laughs> advertising myself there. Uh, so you can see, uh, again, still working with uh, pulling the shape around. And uh, I was kind of, which is a bit naughty in a way, I was, uh, because really you should draw out your ideas, sketch out your ideas, and get your shapes really quickly with pen and paper. Uh, but not many people, um, yeah, well, uh, some people in our industry aren't artists as such, so they tend to sort of um, practice and get their shapes and uh, sketches in the program. So I was kind of sketching in the program. But for some reason, I just could not get a style that I was pleased with, and it just didn't quite work for me. I'm, I'm relatively pleased with the result, and uh, it looks roughly what I was hoping for, but when you imagine these things in your brain, sometimes they don't quite come out as you expect, and uh, this is one of those, I think. It didn't really quite work for me. Uh, so with the metaball approach, it te you tend to sort of, everything sticks together. So things like arms and legs, uh, they're part of the same mesh, if that makes sense. And they're sort of bound, like so his arms are stuck to his uh, fat. <laughs> uh, so you have to sort of crease your way in. And that doesn't always look that great, but it's uh, much easier when you're going out to 3D print and that sort of thing, to have one sort of big blob like that. Uh, so the sort of uh, meshes that are built with the skin modifier are more difficult to print and you get more errors apparently. Uh, I've not printed anything, I've sent lots off to be printed and they uh, come back uh, from my clients and things saying can you try and sort this angle out and uh, do something with this and so forth. So yes, you can see the face uh, I found the hardest bit. And uh, like I say, um, that's my... Um, issues, my art, my artistic issues, is uh, I'm I think I'm okay at getting things looking real in a sense that they look like the objects that I'm um, sculpting, uh, but uh, when it comes to sort of stylizing them, uh, that's where it gets quite tough because you, you want to maintain that element of character, um, or realism, sorry, uh, but give it an element of character as well. Uh, and that's, that's where it really, uh, you know, that separates the men from the boys, uh, to coin a dreadful term. Uh, but uh, you can kind of tell that I haven't got enough experience there. And I think that, so loads of people ask, do I need to be an artist in order to uh, be good at Blender? Well, not to be good at Blender, you certainly don't. Um, but um, it really massively helps if you have, um, or you practice your art, or you've got an artistic background. Um, so I would strongly recommend to anybody uh, that you keep practicing uh, with 2D as well as your 3D. In a sense, the more you practice with Blender, you are becoming an artist uh, because you are looking at objects and seeing um, or breaking them down and trying to understand them and put them into 
uh, or mimic them and uh, duplicate them um, it, <laughs> in a sense and that's what art is it was sort of taking things copying them and adapting them uh, so the more you use blender the more of an artist you're becoming uh, but having a 2d background as well seems um, people seem to be very good at uh, just sort of picking up the shapes and forms and adapting those forms to stylized characters uh, as, as which is what I'm trying to do here and I see obviously on art station and places like that which is uh, really important to go for uh, inspiration art station sketchfab sketchfab is a really good one because you can break down the models uh, and when I go and look at objects on there uh, I'm always very impressed with how they break down uh, the shapes but also adapt them into a style uh, and that's uh, quite exciting to see and that's really uh, I, th I think what um, inspires me um, a lot to move on and uh, push myself so um, I've upped the detail levels and you can see in the corner there I'm on 20 uh, it's not particularly high or anything but uh, going through the stages so the first stage was very low detail and that's really important I say that often uh, go to a very low detail to start uh, but I up the resolution when I go into the face. So the face and the hands, uh, what you tend to look at the most uh, and you notice. So um, with the constant detail on, I up the resolution when I'm uh, into the face and lower it for everything else. Although I forget sometimes because when you're in the flow, and that's one of the problems I have, um, I tend to uh, sort of just move around my object uh, a lot, zooming in and out. Uh, so in to paint the details but out to see how those details are affecting my silhouette and whole entire form so and when I zoom out then I notice another bit and I go to that and start sculpting it or painting it and that's when I forget to change the detail levels uh, so uh, watch out for that one I do find the eyedropper uh, tool in the constant detail very useful because then I can see and so I can move around and think what was the resolution of that area click on it and then I'm automatically in that resolution uh, to paint on that so using that is quite handy I think the stomach looks way too big actually because obviously I wanted this character to have a huge stomach because he's very fat uh, but it just wasn't quite the right shape uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a shame you can still adjust your shape uh, when it's uh, in detailed mode uh, so this sort of stage but um, it's it's much more difficult to pull the shape round uh, and you can sort of adjust it with a really big brush and, and pull the sections around but if you try and make smaller adjustments uh, you get a lot of blobbiness that's uh, my favorite word obviously blobbiness um, and you'll know what I mean from experience there uh, but that's uh, because you've got too much detail basically uh, it's like when you try and smooth when it's really high detail if it's low detail it will smooth out quite uh, large areas but uh, when you've got uh, a lot of detail in there a high poly mesh then uh, it's, which I'm doing at the moment I'm smoothing out and uh, it doesn't move your shape around much because uh, it's just evening the vertices out uh, which are all very close together uh, so uh, smartening up some details here uh, I've whacked the resolution right up and I probably should have gone a bit higher even for the face um, but I'm always conscious um, about um, the uh, my computer and whether it can handle it whether I'm going to have undo errors in 2.8 and so forth haven't had so many of those lately I think uh, what I've noticed is that when I'm undoing if I've looked if it seems like nothing's happened just wait a second and there's a bit of a lag in the undo and if you go uh, undo sort of double tap it almost like oh I'll undo those two phases uh, that's when it seems to glitch and go all the way back to that beginning of the session so just be a bit wary when you're undoing uh, quickly I think that's worth saying not that uh, that's a foolproof method for getting around that error uh, which seems to be quite prevalent uh, so uh, I've turned symmetry off at this point quite late on uh, just to give it a tiny bit more character He's sort of looking up and uh, maybe looking at a cake or something I should have probably modeled a cake in this uh, particular instance because um, I had less time but anyway uh, there's the uh, final piece uh, like I say I'm fairly pleased with it um, but I don't feel like it's got enough character and it's not quite right and that's what I'm working on next as an artist um, and hopefully we'll go on to the Discord server in a second.
Yes, there we go. Uh, lots on the Discord server because of a slight delay this time. Um, and a lovely snake there from Liram. Liram's really improving, well done. Uh, he has his name on his, uh, so it's much easier for me to uh, point him out. Uh, but some excellent work from lots of people there. Um, there's sort of, is that a beaver, I suppose? Uh, nice cannon there, I like that. The weight of the cannon looks a bit unusual though. It's sort of um, floating a bit at the back. Uh, but still very good. Uh, this is an interesting one. It's nice to do shapes and forms like that, just to experiment. I've been experimenting with the radial sculpt tool recently, uh, so I'll be talking about that in my next uh, video. Some lovely work here. Uh, Rufenstent, Stent, Stent, <laughs> however you pronounce that, good work. A uh, nice troll. Uh, and there's someone who's just uh, joined us. Uh, that was excellent work. I, I enjoyed uh, that sculpt. Uh, quite a lot of talent there. Good to see. Uh, Lyrum again. Uh, is that the character from SpongeBob? I haven't actually seen SpongeBob. Uh, uh, that's just that's me. That's a model of me, isn't it? <laughs> Brilliant stuff. I'm not ginger though, so uh, I haven't got red hair. <laughs> uh, so excellent work there. Nice, uh, nice style and. Uh, Sort of, it sort of reminds me of Melancholy as well. And that's uh, Manuhu uh, there, Manuhu, uh, excellent work again. Uh, so, and I scrolled back through thinking which was my favourite and I couldn't decide actually, so well done to everybody. It's uh, some fantastic work uh, from all involved this week, uh, this day. <laughs> I think it's week, is day, isn't it? So uh, there we have it, a shorter one today, a shorter sculpt in general. Um, but uh, hope you enjoyed it, uh, hope you're still with me. And uh, thank you for watching. And uh, all links in the description. Do get across to the Discord server. Do join in the competition, in the Discord server as well, which is sci fi at the moment, and that will be the beginning of February. We'll go through that. So, thanks for watching again, and see you next time.